Cursed Spirits are the main enemy of Jujutsu Kaisen and they have some pretty cool abilities. Some are quite simple and some are, well, a lot. So today we are explaining all of them. From fly heads to disaster curses to even Sukuna, even though he might not actually be a cursed spirit. But more on that later. Let's get started with the first cursed spirit we see in Jujutsu Kaisen, which is this fish looking cursed spirit. Other than being really big, it has no known abilities. So let's move on to a cursed spirit that is actually powerful, the Finger Bearer. The Finger Bearer is the first special grade cursed spirit we are introduced to. It's a cursed room that forms around one of Sukuna's fingers and siphons its power to become incredibly powerful itself. While this cursed spirit also has no unique abilities, it does possess a high degree of cursed energy manipulation. We have seen it use pure cursed energy as a slingshot to cause explosions, infuse its punches with cursed energy, and remove Megumi's shadows by expanding its cursed energy in a circle around it. It also has an incredibly large pool of cursed energy, as it seemed to be able to fight with no fatigue. Now let's move on to the first disaster curse of the series, Jogo. Jogo is the disaster curse manifested from the negative emotions surrounding volcanoes and fire. As such, his main ability revolves around fire manipulation. He can transmute his cursed energy into pure fire and use a few fire-based abilities as well. This includes his ember insects, which are small insects that quickly fly at an opponent, exploding into fire upon impact, or his ability to create these volcano explosions that expel fire. Jogo also possesses a maximum technique and a domain expansion. His domain expansion is Coffin of the Iron Mountain, which traps his opponents in the belly of a volcano. This is a pretty standard lethal domain with one exception. Inside Jogo's domain, it is extremely hot, making the domain capable of killing standard sorcerers without even using a technique. The domain also has a sure hit effect with rocks and most likely lava as well. His maximum technique is Maximum Meteor, in which he summons an enormous meteor to hurl at an opponent. This attack does huge damage to an area, and according to Jogo, this would do massive damage even to Sukuna. However, Sukuna was able to evade it, which makes it seem kind of slow, but that was Sukuna, so it's kind of hard to say for sure. Our next disaster curse is Hanami, the curse created out of the fewer forests and land-based natural disasters. Hanami is arguably the weakest of the disaster curses, but she's still quite powerful. All of her abilities revolve around using cursed energy to create plants. Much like Jogo's fire, these plants are not actually plants. They are Hanami's cursed energy, and as such, they can be destroyed and created at her will. By using these cursed plants, Hanami is able to access four main abilities. The first is the ability to manifest roots, which can be controlled by her in any way she likes. We've seen them be used for restraining and stabbing opponents, as well as outright destruction. She can also create these wooden balls, which eject sharp branches from their center aimed at the target. These seem fairly fast, but they are affected by opposing cursed techniques, and they do disintegrate upon one usage. Her third ability is Cursed Buds, where she throws a cursed seed at an opponent, and it then grows off of their cursed energy, injuring them internally. She can dispense these one at a time, or create a huge bouquet of them, and they seem like one of her more powerful abilities, but not as powerful as her last technique, which is Flower Field. This technique allows Hanami to summon a field of pretty flowers, which distracts her opponents. This was able to temporarily distract even Gojo, which is how you know it's a pretty powerful technique. Hanami also possesses a domain, and while we never get to see it in action, we do know a little bit about it. Before it can be activated, the flower on Hanami's arm must absorb some energy from the surrounding plants. This will allow her to fire a beam from it, which is the sure head effect of the domain. It's worth mentioning that both Jogo and Hanami have the ability to utilize domain amplification as well, which is a technique that neutralizes all techniques it comes in contact with. It acts as a shield around the user's body, but while it's active, the user cannot use their own technique. The third disaster curse is Dagon, but we don't learn that much about it in Season 1, so I'm going to save it until we talk about the Shibuya incident where he is much more prevalent. So let's move from some of the strongest curses to some of the weakest. Flyheads. Flyheads are the bottom of the barrel when it comes to cursed spirits. They are pretty much useless on an individual level and have even been commodified by sorcerers to test who can and cannot see curses. Really, the only use a flyhead can have is to disrupt techniques like the six eyes that can sense cursed energy. As when a lot of them gather, they basically create a smokescreen for cursed energy as we saw in Gojo vs. Toji. Next, we have the first big bad guy of Jujutsu Kaisen. Mahito. Mahito's main ability is Idle Transfiguration, which allows him to alter the souls of humans. This is an incredibly lethal ability to 99% of humans, as even just one touch is enough to kill them. Really, the only exceptions are Gojo because Infinity prevents contact from being made, Yuji because Sukuna will kill Mahito if the curse touches his soul, and strong sorcerers such as Nanami who are able to somewhat resist the ability by shielding themselves with cursed energy. Once a person is transfigured, Mahito can do pretty much whatever he wants with them. He can shrink them down to save for later, or blow them up just for fun. He can also merge two souls together with soul multiplicity, which creates a reaction due to the souls not wanting to be merged. This can take multiple forms, but the only one we've seen animated as of now is Bodies Repel, where multiple souls want to repel like magnets and explode in opposite directions with enormous force. On top of the ability to alter other people's souls, Mahito can also alter his own as well, allowing him to turn his body into just about anything he can think of. This includes changing the size of his body overall, changing parts of it into other matter like swords, drills, or even animal body parts, or changing into whatever this is. Basically, the only limit Mahito 
Hirohito has when it comes to his body is that the larger he becomes, the weaker and slower his attacks are. And it also seems like he cannot completely separate body parts either. On top of all this, Mihiro also has his domain expansion, Self Embodiment of Perfection, which creates an environment where he automatically connects to anyone's souls if they're in his domain. This gives him a huge advantage over almost all humans, and as we see in the manga, he can also open it in 0.2 seconds, much like Gojo. Mihiro also has a few other abilities that are exclusive to the manga at the time of recording. The first is his polymorphic soul isomer, which is an independent entity made from multiple fused souls. Unlike transfigured humans, these do not run the risk of dying randomly and can hit much harder, as they were capable of sending even a strong sorcerer like Toto flying. However, because they possess so much power, they do not have a lot in the way of physical defense. We also learn that he can create a body double, but this double is not that strong. It can't use idle transfiguration and really only seems good for general recon. The final ability we see Mahito use is Spirit Body of Distorted Killing, which he considers the true essence of his soul. This form is much tougher than Mahito's regular form and was apparently much stronger as well, but that didn't stop him from being packed up by Yuji. Our next curse is another small one. It's the Yasahachi Bridge Curse. This is basically just a really annoying diglet that has tons of heads that need to be destroyed like whack-a-mole. Besides that, it doesn't really have any outstanding characteristics and it seems pretty weak. Now we come to the Death's Paintings, a set of three brothers that are half human and half cursed spirit. All of their techniques revolve around blood with both Esso and Kichizu having the rot technique which makes their blood corrosive. This technique can also apply the decay technique which will slowly kill someone that is doused in the blood of these two brothers. Esso also has a maximum technique in Wing King, which allows him to shoot dozens of blood tracks at an opponent. It also kind of seems like he has some sort of hovering abilities with them, but it's kind of ambiguous. We're also introduced to Chozo at this time, but like Dagon, we don't learn much about him until Shibuya, so we're gonna talk about him then. For now, we're gonna move into Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, starting with, of course, Cursed Rika. Cursed Rika is a vengeful spirit that attached itself to Yuta Okotsu. She is incredibly powerful, having near-infinite cursed energy and more destructive power than any other curse at the time. This made her nearly impossible to exercise and made her a huge threat to Jujutsu society as a whole. Even a partial manifestation would be enough to kill a lower-ranked sorcerer, and it was feared that even Gojo would not be able to be a full manifestation. While her destructive potential is the main reason Rika is a threat, she does have two other abilities she can use. The first is storing copied curse techniques for Yuta. This is a vital ability for Yuta, but it doesn't really matter that much for Rika, as she's not capable of using a technique without Yuta's instruction first. Her other ability is firing a concentrated beam of cursed energy from her eye. This is enough to overwhelm Ghetto and destroy the special grade cursed spirit he was using with ease. In the manga, we see Rika again, however, there is some debate as to whether she's still a cursed spirit or is a Shikigami here. Regardless, in this state, she acts a lot more like a curse technique for Yuta rather than a separate entity. The only other important curse we see in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is Tamamo no Mei, which is one of the 16 registered special grade cursed spirits. Unfortunately, we don't know much about this spirit, as it did get destroyed by Rika without us seeing its ability. That's actually it for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, so we're going to be moving on to hidden inventories. The first and most important curse in this arc is Toji's Inventory Curse. This curse has a seemingly infinite stomach, allowing for the storage of multiple items like cursed weapons, cursed spirits, and even human bodies. It is able to curl up into a tiny ball as well, which can let Toji swallow it to prevent the curse from being detected. The last we saw of this curse, it was in the hands of Ghetto during Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Next we have the Rainbow Dragon, one of Ghetto's strongest curse spirits. It's a fast dragon with the hardest hide of any of his spirits, but besides that we don't know a ton about it, except that he used it in his fight against Toji alongside Kuchisane Ona, a vengeful spirit that is capable of casting a simple domain. Once inside this domain, both her and her victim are forced to not attack until her victim answers her question, after which she attacks with multiple scissors that fly around at high speeds. We also saw Ghetto use a few more unnamed cursed spirits in hidden inventories, such as the giant curse which just looks like a giant, the squid curses which are small weak curses that Ghetto mostly uses as a projectile, the worm curse which is a giant toothed worm that could swallow other cursed spirits and took up the space of an entire hallway, and the curse that he used to massacre the village which we don't know anything about. That is it for hidden inventories, so it's time to get into the Shibuya incident. Starting with the grasshopper. This guy is pretty simple. His abilities are based on the abilities of a grasshopper, so he can do things like fly, spit black sludge, and stab with his abdomen. Other than that, he's not that notable and he's not that clever either. We are then introduced to the smallpox deity in its fight against Mei Mei. The smallpox deity's technique focuses on its domain, where upon casting the victim is trapped in a tight coffin. The curse then drops a large stone on top of the coffin, burying it underground, and then counting down from three. If the victim cannot escape the coffin by the time the curse reaches zero, they die instantly. Next, we are introduced to the last of the death's paintings, Chozo. Chozo is the oldest and most powerful of the paintings. He shares an ability with the Kamo clan in blood manipulation and is the only person in the show that can fully utilize the technique. This is because 
Chozo possesses the unique ability to turn cursed energy into blood, meaning that as long as Chozo has cursed energy, he cannot die or pass out from blood loss. This allows him to use his blood-based abilities way more recklessly than a regular blood manipulation user. While Chozo has a ton of different techniques under his belt, he mainly utilizes three of them. The first is piercing blood, which is the standard high-end blood manipulation attack. It is essentially a bullet of blood, moving at the speed of sound with no drawbacks other than having to gather blood in their hands first. The second is flowing red scale, which allows Chozo to move faster by heating up his blood. He can also stack multiple flowing red scales to overclock his body and move even faster than normal. And the third technique is his original technique, Supernova, which is similar to piercing blood, but instead of being one fast bullet, it releases in a buckshot. In addition to these techniques, we have also seen Chozo use meteorite and harden his body outright. Much like the other Death's paintings, his blood is also poisonous, and as the oldest brother, Chozo is also able to imitate his younger brother's abilities as we saw with Wing King. He really shows the full potential of blood manipulation, and I hope we get to see Chozo use more of it in the future. The last cursed spirit we see in the Shibuya incident is Dagon. Unfortunately, despite being a disaster curse, we don't know a ton about Dagon. He started out as a cursed womb, and after consuming a large amount of humans, he manifested into his full octopus-looking form. Similar to Hanami and Jogo, Dagon's ability originates from disasters, this time from water-based disasters. This means he can generate massive waves of water from his cursed energy. These are extremely powerful as they were able to overwhelm even first grade sorcerers with little issue. He also has the ability to summon Shikigami from his stomach and we really see this ability excel in his domain, Horizon of the Captivating Skanda. When inside, all victims are subjected to an endless torment of Shikigami known as Death Swarm. This is the sure hit effect of his domain and when it is active, the Shikigami spawn on their targets directly, making them truly a sure hit attack. Unfortunately, that's all we really get to see of this curse because shortly after he opens his domain, he gets eviscerated by Toji. After Shibuya, we don't see a cursed spirit for quite a while. In fact, the next one that plays any role in the story at all is Kurouushi in the Sendai Colony. Kurouushi is the embodiment of hatred and fear towards cockroaches. Because cockroaches are so detested in society, Kurouushi is extremely powerful. He's one of the 16 registered special grade cursed spirits and he boasts multiple roach-based abilities. The first of which is his ability to create and control enormous swarms of cockroaches. These roaches are so strong and numerous, they're able to devour a human in seconds. Even the average sorcerer wouldn't be able to survive against the swarm. When these cursed cockroaches feed, it stimulates Kurushi's parthenogenesis, which allows the curse to create even more cockroaches. It can even use parthenogenesis to create a new cursed offspring to preserve its existence if its previous body dies. His final ability is Earthen Insect Trance, which summons a couple of insects that carry sacks of fluid with the intention of impairing the target's vision. In addition to these techniques, Kurushi also carries the Festering Life Sword as a cursed tool. This blade has six nesting pods, all of which can fire insect eggs into the target upon impact. The eggs then hatch instantly and devour the victim from within before bursting forth through their skin. The only other curse we're introduced to in the Culling Games is Cursed Noya, the vengeful spirit of Noya Zenin that manifested after his death by the hand of a non-sorcerer. This form is substantially stronger than regular Noya, as it is much tougher and somehow even faster. Regardless, his ability is still projection sorcery, which allows him to turn a single second into 24 frames of animation and trace a set of movements using those frames. While this technique is active, anything Noya touches must also move at 24 frames per second or will be frozen in a frame of animation for one second. However, Chris Noria seems to rely on pure speed for his offense rather than his technique, as there seems to be no physical drawback for him if he collides with an opponent, and he's capable of colliding with opponents at up to Mach 3. He also developed a domain expansion in Time Cell Moon Palace. In this lethal domain, Noya can inject frames of animation into his opponents. This basically uses projection sorcery on a cellular level, causing cells to freeze if they don't move at 24 frames per second, which creates cuts on the victim internally and externally. It can even sever limbs if the victim attempts to move. It's a really powerful domain, but it did get dismantled by Maki as she cannot be detected by domains. Next, we have a bit of a special case. We have to talk about Master Tengen. While Master Tengen was born a human, they later turned into a cursed spirit due to not fusing with a plasma star vessel. This caused them to undergo evolution as their immortality curse technique did not stop the aging process, just the dying process. This evolution essentially turned them into a cursed spirit who is then absorbed by Kenjaku. The last cursed spirit we were introduced to is Ganesha a special grade cursed spirit from outside of Japan, likely from India. We don't know a lot about this curse, but its ability seems to be removing obstacles and targeting concepts. While this sounds really powerful, we only got to see it used against US troops where it was combined with Kenjaku's anti-gravity technique, so it's hard to say just how strong this curse really is. It did get one shot by Yuki, but that's kind of her thing, so I wouldn't say this is really a markdown on its strength. A lot of people are probably curious about Sukuna, and the truth is, Sukuna is not a cursed spirit, he's a sorcerer. His title is King of Curses and Spirits, and he was supposed to be allied with the disaster curses, 
is. And he did turn himself into a cursed object, but by all definitions, he has the characteristics of a sorcerer. He uses reverse curse technique to heal, which is the biggest indication of not being a curse. And he's considered the strongest sorcerer in history, and cursed spirits cannot be sorcerers. But don't worry, if you came here for an explanation of his abilities, we're still gonna go over them. At the time of recording, we don't know what Sukuna's base technique is, but we do know two offshoots of it. Cleave and Dismantle. These are both slashing attacks that traverse space invisibly, with Dismantle being used to cut up inanimate objects as it attacks at one steady strength, and Cleave being used to attack enemies as it can adjust its strength to always fell an opponent in one hit. In addition to these abilities, in chapter 236, Sukuna also gains the ability to cut space itself. This is an extremely powerful technique, as it doesn't target an opponent to slash, but the space they exist in, meaning there is no defense that can prevent it from hitting besides evasion. Sukuna is also one of two characters to have a burialist domain, his being Malevolent Shrine. While within the radius of this domain, the victim is constantly subjected by slashes from Sukuna. These slashes will automatically target their preferred medium, so Dismantle will hit inanimate objects and Cleave will hit objects with cursed energy. Because of Sukuna's mastery of Jujutsu, Sukuna can change the conditions of his domain at will via a binding vow. This allows him to slash certain areas of the domain more effectively or change the size of the domain as long as it stays under 200 meters. We've also seen Sukuna take on multiple forms throughout the series. The first was of course in Yuji's body, the second in Megumi's body, and most recently we have seen him revert back to his Hyon era form. This form has been considered perfection for Jujutsu sorcery. With multiple arms, Sukuna is able to cast hand signs alongside his technique, and with multiple mouths, Sukuna can chant for Jujutsu with no worries about catching breath or wearing out his vocal cords. He essentially has no limitations when it comes to Jujutsu when compared to a normal sorcerer. And he also appears to be significantly taller than any human character we've seen so far, and he's also buff as hell. Sukuna also makes use of two cursed tools, a trident and kamotoke. We don't know anything about the trident at this point, but kamotoke seems to be a weapon used for ranged combat with the capability of firing lightning bolts. However, we don't even know how strong this actually is yet, as the only person we have seen it used on was Kashimo, who was immune to it because of his own electrical abilities. And that's everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, as over 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. Maybe also leave a like, and check out a couple other videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video.